Hello. Welcome to this episode of Free Fly Tying Instruction from Everything Fly Fishing. We're going to teach you today how to tie a merger. Now this merger is very interesting because I didn't get this pattern out of a book. A long time ago I was fishing a Penn's Creek Hall and a man came up with me to me and asked me how I was making out and I had thrown every caddis pattern I had, every elk hair caddis, every just couldn't figure out what the heck they were, they were biting on. And he says, here, try these. And I, I noticed something funny about the guy's accent, accent. Sorry, excuse me. His accent. And after I went back and we had a beer together and started talking, he was from New Zealand and he had came, and all, came all the way to Pennsylvania to fish Penn's Creek. And he gave me this pattern. And we chatted over a couple beers and he said he was leaving. And we headed back to the creek because we hadn't been there that long. Man, them patterns really worked. And I have a habit of when I, every time somebody gives me a fly or I get a fly or Trial Unlimited gives me flies, I put them in a little container and look at them to make sure I'm tying them right. Just make sure they look like the one that Cabela's would sell you or something like that. And I had kept that pattern. And in this video, I try to duplicate it. Now, I use different color wings, body material, uh, tails. All different for different from the March Brown. The one I'm going to tie to show you will be a uh, what would be like the Grandum Caddis or Elk Hair Caddis Emerger. But like I said, you could tie it with a brown and ribbit and use it for the March Brown with a darker wing. Um, you can use uh, wood duck wing. You can use any kind of wing, any kind of body material, and just tie it in different colors to represent the other flies. And I mean, they really work as emerger patterns. So enjoy the video. And if you like this video at any time, give it a thumbs up. And please come and subscribe to our channel for a lot this video, a lot more videos to come. Excuse me. And we are uh, running a contest with to, for those who subscribe. So come and subscribe and join our contest. And like always, thank you for watching our videos here at Everything Fly Fishing. I'm Fly Guy. Enjoy our video. Um, another thing I almost forgot to tell you is that if you look up in the uh, corner, which would be up in here somewhere, of all of our, our new videos now, there's a little I button for information button. When you click that, you can donate money to some of our charities that we like, like Trout Unlimited. You can donate money to this channel to keep our videos going. So that's a neat new interactive feature we added to our videos that you might want to check out. It's pretty cool. Thank you. Welcome back to the, fly, the free fly tying instruction. This one is on a fly that I got from New Zealand. So let's get started. First I started with a... I've already wrapped the thread, as you can see, all the way back to the back. and put some uh, head cement on it. Now I have this like, it's like a red tinted. It, the feather comes from the base of the f pheasant tail way down where the feather is really short, like the base of it. And they have a really funky red tint to them. And uh, when I was trying to duplicate the fly the guy gave me, this is as close as I could come with for the tail. So you tie that, you take a piece of that. Grab the ends, pull them off, measure it. Almost as long as they're right to the hook. T. Loose wraps. Then you tighten them up, and I come up through to save body material later. I come up through. Cut it off. I'll do the rest. Back. Where I'm going to start the dubbing. Then go all the way back to the tail. 
Then I have this. I think it's called Antron. I've been tying for a lot of years. Sometimes I forget. I don't label things, but it's this really shiny black Antron. The original fly was tied in a brownish Antron, and I do tie them in the brownish Antron. But I am tying now for the beginning of season. See, you can change the color of the dubbing to match whatever merger you are using. And I use this gray, this gray and I tie it. And I use it for the like Conquer Gaddis and stuff like that. It works really well. It was actually uh, the Caddis season when the original one was, but even, it was late in Caddis. So it was like a light colored caddis. Just add dubbing until you're happy. The dubbing. I come up here to the base. Now this is another thing you can change. You can use different deer hairs for this. You know, darker deer hair, lighter deer, different deer hairs, elk hairs. You know, and this is the one I use. I'm using for this one. You can use the elk hairs for the caddises. Works real well. An elk hair. I have to tell you that, sorry. It's an elk hair caddis. Basically, a merger. Now, I know a lot of you tires love to use that deer hair stacker. On this pattern, I would not use a deer hair stacker. The simple fact is, it's an emerger pattern. It kind of wants to look rough, it doesn't want to look like it's so you bring the, deer, the thread back up to halfway between your hackle and your eyelet and you measure your wing what I like to do is uh, grab the tips which you right out to where you're going to use and just pull this stuff and go back in measure your wing And then wrap a couple thin wraps. And I like to pick it up and pull. And underneath. The hair up, go around the eyelet. Yeah. Got your hair stand up. Go back here. Pick it up. Cut it right like that. Back in. And that would be your wing. And it's, I use a, uh, most of these I tie, I use a light, done hackle. Pick your size your hackle out. I like to go a little bit larger. 
with the merger just a hair. So I like to retain it at, let's say, a 14. You do it in like a size 10, and so on. And tie that in. Now I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little, your little piece of your feather. I'm gonna clip off out cutting your deer hair. Now, I like to at this point back in and I found like I don't know toothpick incense stick and what do you have just take a little drop Ooh. your little drop and drop one there And then you let it sit and then dry. So once you get to that point, you grab the hackle pliers and you hackle. You go right around that. You have that thread. Hopefully, your hackle doesn't slip out of your pliers. Mine just did. It does just rewrap it. I have to show you when things like that happen because I don't know when I was young, I would watch tires. They made it look so easy. I like to see that things happen. It used to happen to them that it happened to me when I'm tying, so I won't get discouraged. And then you just, I take the, the thread and shake and go down through. So once you have that tied off, you can come by, clip it off, thread off, or the end of, not the thread, the other end of your hackle off. And I move to the front, pull this back. Tying off the head. I've got one point to step. You always pull this back. You don't want to get that caught up in your in your hackle pliers. Or in your whip finisher. Sorry about that. And clip this off. Thread off. Back to your tip. There you have it. Deer. The New Zealand merger. And I really thank the guy from New Zealand that gave me this pattern. Because this baby works. Matter of fact, 
I never used to fish any emergers, and this and I tie up with, like I said, the different deer, different deer hairs, you know, and the elk hair and deer hair and heck, squirrel hair. I tied them with squirrel hair, and the different wings and different body materials for the different hatches, like the round the March brown. You can use brown bodies and ribbit, and just tie them in that solo wing, and man, they really work. Work like crazy. Tie some of these up. Be ready for that caddis hatch this year. Thank you for watching.